down in Miami this winter. Well, Annie sure was a bust for me this winter. All sunshine and no sugar. Well, I sure am glad to see you back in Manic City. This is my last season by the sad sea waves, Bertha. Positively a fell performance. Honey, child, you've been saying that for nearly seven years. And I know. And every year I come back hoping. Hoping that you will find that distinguished looking gentleman you're always talking about. And a dream man. Somehow, I have a feeling my dream will come true. Anyway, I'm going to start the season by wishing on the first star I see tonight. You know, Miss Babe, I've been thinking about Mr. Brady. He's kind of distinguished looking and he's dead going on you. He's just a gambler, Bertha. He may be a gambler, but he sure makes a powerful good living. Speak to Babe La. La. You know. Tell us Jimmy. You know. Jim Cunningham. Jimmy Cunningham. -y. Who? What? That man from the last convention last year. What man from which convention? That man who took room 516 last summer and kept going in day and night. That Philadelphia soup fellow? That's him, all right. The big soup man from Philly. I think he's crazy. He just sits down in 516 all day long with a big bottle of gin in one hand and a picture you in the other. He's gone from soup to nuts. I don't want to talk to him. The electric washers have just arrived. Hello? Put him on. This is Cupid Petty John. Not little Cupid from Canton, Ohio. That's right. Little Cupid from Canton, High D O Hi O. Hi D Ohio. Boss, that's rich. Hey, listen, babe. I got a couple of pals here with me. Sure, could you get three girls? I think I'll be able to manage it. You're sure you've got a suite? Okay. Operator, get me 90852. That's right. Tracy. Yeah, this is Babe. Babe? No kidding. 
Now listen. Oh, babe, you're a lifesaver. I'll get the girls and we'll be right over. Okay. Goodbye, babe. Girls. Girls, what do you think has just happened? Don't tell me the moon's come over the mountain. The electric washers are in town. Oh, those cheapskates. Every time they hear a taxi meter click, they think they've been shot. Here we are practically dying of starvation, and you... No more starving for us. Tonight we eat. Says who? Says Babe Lavelle. Was that Babe hey. on the phone? No less. Girls, get into your cute little evening card. Ah, uh, come in. Come right in, girls. Come right in. Mm. Yeah. Have, the, have the key to the liquor chest? I'll settle for a cup of lamb chops. Oh. Boys, meet the girls. Reading from left to right, if you can read. Gracie, Peg, and Betty. Just three little pigs working their way through college. Oh, well, you'll get a better <laughs> education here. Well, welcome to Banish Dirtland. Put a card the ball sees. Banish Dirtland. Banish your own dirt. We want to punish the mashed potatoes. You don't mean to say that you girls are hungry. Well, first you've got to help us drink up all this. It'll give you an appetite. Say, are you trying to be funny? An appetite is all we've had for days. Yeah, big boy. When do we eat? When you help us drink up all this. When we're drinking for the eat, watch it. I never saw three dames out so quick. It looks as though we got out of buying them dinner anyway. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll alibi that and make them like it. To leave it to my mess. Fine. Well, what are we going to do about this? Room service, please. Hello, room service. This is Mr. Pettijohn, suite 614. I want three orders, a porterhouse steak, an onion, and a... Please, what on earth is the matter with you? I don't know. Why? Yes, you know. You was worried about Tommy. Well, it is funny. He wasn't the station to meet me. Nothing funny about that, no count. Bethany, don't holler, Miss B, because that's just what he is. No good, no count. I just tells you, honey child, you just wasting that mother feeling of yawn when you throws it away on Tommy. Nephew or no nephew. Just you take Bertha's word for it. Right's right and wrong's nobody. Come in. Speaking of nothing. Mm. Why weren't you at the station to meet me, Tommy? I couldn't, babe. I was working. Was it a good job? Well, I don't mean a job. I was working on a proposition. What kind of proposition this time? Oh, why do you always have to ask me questions? Who has a better right? What is the proposition? A business proposition. What kind of business? What kind of business? A fellow wants me to go in business with him. What fellow? Dan? So help me, Tommy. If I find out you're mixed up in any racket, I'll turn you over to the first cop I run into. And you know the cops in this town will do a lot for me. Ah, oh, don't get sore, babe. You know, I wouldn't do anything to hurt you. I didn't think he would, intentionally. 
Oh, there goes my mascara. You know, I haven't been doing anything, babe. Honest, I haven't. There you go with that honest gag. Now I know you're lying. Come on. I'm late now. I beg your pardon. I hope you're not. What's the matter, babe? Are you hurt? No. It was all my fault. I'm all right. I'm so sorry. All right, boy. Why the sour note? Aren't you glad to see me? Sure, I'm glad. Thanks. I forgot. Last will tell. Speaking of class, who's the mooch? How should I know? I've never seen him before in my life. Why don't you behave? I saw you giving a big eye. Since when were we married? Hey, that's not a bad idea. No dice, Bill. No dice. Still ashamed of my profession? If you want to call it that. Well, it's a whole lot more honest than Wall Street. Uh, I didn't mean to hurt your feelings, Bill. You can't hurt my feelings. I'm stuck on you. You know that, don't you? Why don't you let me take you out of this place? You mean this place? Yeah, this place. We'll go somewhere and we'll start all over again. With another gambling joint. Well, why not? No city, no suckers. Ladies and gentlemen, once again we present your favorite, Helen Shelton, singing Sand in My Shoes. At least if we left this burg, you could shake the sand out of your shoes. Do I? 
your business is out of my nose. Speaking of the lady, there's a poor little gal in there. Oh, you make me sick. Now, will you listen? This poor kid's had a tough break. She came down here with some parachute jumper who gave her a song and dance about getting a job stunting over Steel Pier. And then he blew out on her. I suppose you put her up and fed her. Just and... till you came back, babe. How thoughtful. The town's guardian angel. Why don't you start the Bill Bradley home for wayward girls? Well, I figured you'd give her a chance at a, at a job as a hostess. And when are you figuring for me? It pays to figure in my racket. There you go, you and your racket. Will you let me tell you about this little gal? I took her over to the Manhattan. My hotel? Sure, got her fixed up nice, too. Got a room right on your floor where... You can see she gets started right. You know, babe. Yeah, I know. Hello, Sarah. Hello, Miss Babe. I'm certainly glad to see you. My, but you look good. Hello, honey. I suppose you're Bill Bradley's little friend. So you want to be a hostess? Oh, Miss Laval, if you'd only let me. By the way, kid, what's your name? Daisy. Daisy Miller. Well, listen, Daisy Miller, if that is your name. You seem like a nice enough kid, and I like you. Don't you think you ought to go home? Maybe Bill and I can raise oh, the Oh, Miss Laval, I, I couldn't. I just couldn't face I the... I know. You couldn't face the music. Well, if you want to stay here and play a couple of tunes, it's okay by me. Consider yourself a hostess. Oh, Miss Laval, you're just Can the well. orchid. Come along. We'll go find Louie. Louie, this is Daisy. She'll be in tomorrow night. I want you to take good care of her when I'm not around. Now run along. Everything's set. Well, what's on your alleged mind? There's been quite a lot of singles in here tonight, babe. All asking for you. And that stag over there. What stag over where? Well, you know the one I mean. The one that's got Bill burned up. Well, what about him? Asked for you three or four times. Says it's important. You nearly ran me down the boardwalk. Maybe he wants to pay damages. Now, where are your other singles? There's one over here and another over there. Well, I'll seat the girls. Now look after your friends. Lonesome? No, no. You see, I, I promised Mirandy. That's my wife. Not Some me. of our hostesses are very beautiful. I just dropped in to see what the place looks like. You haven't seen anything yet. Look at that little brunette over there. She won a beauty contest last season. Isn't she adorable? She is beautiful. But you see, I promised Mirandy. Now, isn't that a coincidence? Doesn't she remind you of your wife? Well, there is a difference. Now, you've got to be very nice to this little girl. Her name's Miranda, too. Do tell. Waiter. What'd you know about Daisy? She okay? Sure, gambler. I'll take care of her. Ah, babe, you're a peach. Well, I gotta go over to the joint now. Wanna see you later? Don't worry. I'll send you a party before the night's over. You think that's all I got to worry about? Well, what do gamblers worry about? Maybe about the daisy girl. Hmm? Ah. Trying to spend some of Babe's money? No, some of mine. I don't want you or your kind of do in my place. On your way. And stay away from Tommy. You don't own this town. I can buy and sell you. Come on. Wait a minute, kid. What are you doing hanging around with a rat like Dan? Well, he promised to get me a job. Yeah? In Leavenworth. Well, why don't you give me something to do in here? That'd be just like you. And up a common gambler and breaking Babe's heart. Go to work. Well, I'll try, Bill. Honest, I will. There you go with that honest stuff of yours. Now, go on over to the cafe and look out for Babe. Take her home tonight. What's the matter, Bill? Worried about some guy over at the cafe? Pay a little more attention to Babe. What are you going to have? 
Oh, an orange blossom, please. Orange blossoms are for brides. Maybe I'm a little optimistic. Oh, uh, waiter. An orange blossom and a bottle of ginger ale, please. By the way, I tried to reach you at your hotel this afternoon. Oh, yes. There was some business or other, wasn't there? It's about Jim Cunningham. Cunningham? Don't you know him? You do meet quite a lot of men, don't you? That's my job, Mr. Hollister. Well, I'm Jim Cunningham's boss. That is, I was. You see, Jim's a soup man, too. Jim. Oh, I remember. Bertha, she's the man at our hotel, was telling me something about a soup man. Is your Jim in 516 at the Manhattan Hotel? That's the man. Well, he's no soup man. His specialty seems to be gin. Exactly. And you were the innocent cause of him losing his job. I fired him because he drinks too much. What's that got to do with me? Well, he says he's going to stay drunk until you marry him. That's very flattering of him. It's more serious than you think. Jim's a good man when he's sober, and I want him back. Now, for your part. Yes, where do I come in? Right here. I thought you might persuade Jim to go to a sanitarium on some pretext or other. For instance... Well, I'd promise to marry him if he'd be a good little boy. You seem to take this thing as a joke. I'm dying from laughter. All right, Mr. Hollister. I'll put away your rover boy for you. That's mighty fine of you. But I don't see exactly how you're going to do it. Oh, I can do it all right. But it won't be for your friend Cunningham. Oh, uh, waiter. You're not leaving. If we're going to move Jim tonight, I'll need some money. I'm going over to my hotel and get a check cash. You stay right where you are. I can get a cash for you. Very well. You better make it out to me. It'll be simpler. My name's still good in this town. <laughs> I don't doubt that. What uh, name shall I use? Babe Lavelle? You better make it Cynthia. I'm Cynthia to my friend. You stay here. I won't stay away from you for long. Tommy. Run over to Bill's and get this check cash for me, will you? Oh, babe. And tell him to come over here. I want to see him. And tell me, if Bill hasn't got the cash, run around to the hotel and get it off Mac at the desk. Say, didn't I tell you to... What's this? They want you to cash it. And she wants the dough now. Yeah? This guy Hollister's making a big play for her, isn't he? Well, tell her I haven't got it. Yeah, but she wants to see you too, Bill, right away. Tell her I might come over and... It... Hey, Charlie, give me my hat. Where are you going, Bill? I'm going to give that babe Laval a piece of my mind. Where are you going? I got to go over to the hotel for babe. Running errands again, eh? No, I'm not, Sam, but I got to get this check cash. Let me see. Made out to babe. Unnatural. What do you mean, unnatural? You're the sappiest guy I ever saw in my life. Here, I'll cash it for you. No, Dan, I got to get a cash at the hotel. You got a what? All she wants is a dough. Yeah, but I gotta get I it. I thought you said you wanted to get into the big money. Sure I do. Well, then take these five C notes. I can run that check into five grand. Five thousand dollars? Yeah, small timer. Five thousand dollars. Maybe ten. That's a lot of money. Sure, it's a lot of money. And you'll get your cut, kid. Yeah, but what if she finds out I didn't get the check cashed at the hotel? Get a backbone. If she beeps, say you forgot and cash it with Mike at the five star. I'll fix it with Mike. Well, after all, I'm not hurting babe, am I? Of course not. Walk up and be a man. See you tomorrow. Mr. Hollister, this is Mr. Bradley. How do you do, sir? Sit down, Bill. This is the gentleman who's cashing your checks for you. Oh. Did you bring the money with you, Bill? Well, no, I, uh, 
I didn't have that much cash on hand. So I sent my man around to the night and day bank for five G's. Five thousand dollars. Now I think I'll be able to take care of that little matter for you without any trouble. That's quite all right, Mr. Bradley. I guess Tommy's getting me the money for my hotel. I'm sorry you had to bother, Mr. Bradley. Uh, no bother at all, Mr. Hollister. I'm always glad to do Miss LaValle or any of a friend of favor. You must be a very busy man working so late. Yeah. Uh, I want a cigar factory right across the street. This is the beginning of our busy season. We're running three shifts. That's how I happen to be open so late. What brands do you manufacture, Mr. Bradley? Uh, the boardwalk special. Uh, here, have one. I must have forgotten to load up before I left the joint. Joint? Factory. Well, I'd like to buy you folks a drink, but uh, my night shift is just going to work, and before I... Before uh... you go, I'd like to borrow a couple of your gorillas tonight. My what? Your strong arm men. I don't get you, Miss Laval. A couple of those plug uglies that hang around your factory. Do you by any chance mean the guards I employ? They'll do very nicely. Are you expecting trouble, Hollister? Not exactly, no. You see... I'm doing Mr. Hollister a little favor. Oh, you are, are you? In that case, I'll be glad to. Is there anything else you'd like? My car, for example? That'll be splendid. Just when do you wish to live? Here's your dough, babe. Thanks. Thank you. Now about the car. We want to start right away. The bus and the gorillas will be waiting for you, babe. In front of my joint. Thanks, Bill. If Mr. Hollis is a gambling man. I'll bring him around later. It's been a pleasure to meet you, Mr. Hollister. The pleasure is mutual, Mr. Bradley. Yes. Oh, uh, waiter. I'll meet you outside. All right. You seem to be doing all right by yourself. Oh, uh, just an old friend. Well, I wouldn't mind finding an old friend like that myself. Listen, will you go over to the washer table with Gracie and the others? I want them to go to Bill's place and give it a play. Well, those washer babies have got any of what it takes. Bill can start a second company. Aren't you girls eating? <laughs> you know, it's funny, but somehow I don't feel so hungry now. What's the matter with you girls? Have you lost your appetites? <laughs> I'm dieting. Oh. <laughs> well, where do we go from here? What do you mean, from here? Well, we can get action. Action? 
She says the best place in town to get action is Bill Bradley's. Brother, you're right. There's always action there. Well, action is what we want. <laughs> and action is what you all get. Yeah. Here comes Betty. <laughs> we're going to go, Betty. Waiter. Waiter. Hey, Betty, we're going to Bill Bradley's. But I haven't any money. Oh, that'll be okay, baby. Uh, waiter. Waiter, bring me the check. With pleasure. Yeah. For who? <laughs> hmm. You can send the men back. You and I can take care of him. Take the car back to Bill. And... After this and Bill Bradley's, you better wire for more money. What account shall I charge you to? Entertaining a customer, Bill Bradley. Hey, stupid, your wife called you up long distance from Canton at midnight. Yeah? And your wife called you up long distance from Canton at 1 a.m. And your wife called you up long distance from Canton at 2 a.m. Boss, I think your wife called you. Uh, every hour on the hour. Well, anyway, she's still in Canton. <laughs> I'm glad you sent that car back. Why? It's a beautiful night for a chair ride. That seems to be your favorite recreation. You should have on a heavier wrap. I'm all right. Manhattan Hotel. I wasn't asleep. I was just so... So what? So... <laughs> what does it matter? Good night, Cornelius. Won't you sit down? Thank you. Go on, say it. Say what? That I'm not the kind of a gal to work in a place like the Bozar. <laughs> I was going to. I thought you were different from the rest of them. Why don't you tell me that underneath this rough exterior there beats a heart of gold? Haven't you a heart of gold? <laughs> well, I don't know about the gold part. But the heart sure is beating right now. No kidding. You are different at best. So you've changed your mind. Well, what makes me different? That is, to you. Well, in the first place, you haven't told me I misunderstood you are at home. Maybe I'm not. Congratulations. Few married men can say that... I live alone. Then you're not married. What do you think? I think I'm a little tired. Does that mean that you're throwing me out? Yes. For my own good. May I see you tomorrow? What do you say to a chair ride at four o'clock? Okay. You can come for me here. Right. Good night. Good night.
No kidding, babe. What are you trying to do? Play me for a sucker with this Hollister? Not at all. He just wanted us to help him. You were a dear. Yeah. Lucky Bill. Always in the middle. Just using me in your little romance with your great big soap man. Soup. It's time to can him. This isn't a romance, Bill. Just a beautiful friendship. I know where these beautiful friendships lead. Why, Bill, Mr. Hollister is a perfect gentleman. Are you really in love with this bird? He's kind of nice, Bill. Yeah. They're all nice. While the convention lasts. Good time, Charlie's every one of them. Maybe he'll be different. He'll break your heart and leave you to pick up the pieces. It might be worth it. You are in love with him. Why, Bill. I didn't think you knew what real love was. Who says I don't? Well, what is it? Well, it's, uh... Well, it's, uh... It's... Well, it's, it's, it's when you... Well? Babe, the way I feel about you. On a public beach. Where are you going? To see a cat about a dog. Stow it. I'm going in. Are you coming? No. The last one in is a so-and-so. They are. They're lying, cute. Oh, 
Don't bother me. I want to watch this act. Listen, a skinny woman on the pier, she was looking for her husband. <laughs> <laughs> she said her name was Patty John from Canton, Ohio. <laughs> Come on, girls. It's getting pretty warm in here. We better get out. Nothing to do I came here to see the diving horse, and I'm going to see it. Uh, why, I can't watch that act. It's cruelty to animals. What animals? Us animals. I'll be right with you. I'll just put on some more paint. It won't take a minute. All right. do, Mr. Bradley? Delightful weather we're having, Mr. Bradley. Huh? Oh, yeah. So you had a couple of things to do, huh? What's your hurry, Mr. Bradley? Why, uh, I'm busy. Won't you join us? Doing what? We're going for a chair ride. I've never been in one of those things since I've been in Atlantic City. Maybe that's what's the matter with you. There ain't nothing the matter with me. Why won't you come along? Because I don't want to. Oh, yes, you do. You're just too stubborn to admit it. Sorry, but I'm going for no chair ride. Oh, yes, you are. Oh, no, I ain't. How do you like it? It's swell, but the speed is killing me. Hold it, Ellis. Have you a cigar with you, Mr. Bradley? I never smoke cigars. And you a prominent cigar manufacturer? I was just out of cigars, and I thought this might be a good chance to stock up at your factory. Say, what does a guy like him want in a joint like mine? I still have some of that $500 left. Okay. Over there. Another seven. <laughs> Maybe a nice guy to have around the factory. Eleven. Hey, Joe. Are these house dice or out of your own private stock? Let's quit. You'll nickel this big shot to death. Good thing we're not shooting for real, though. He'd have had me broke long before this. <laughs> what do we do now? Let's eat. Good idea, and right in the bar, too. Fine. Fill him up again, Kelly. No more for me, thanks. That's mighty fine beer. I serve nothing but the best. It's the only way to build up a real business. And what a business. Now, that's a woman for you. Always beaten because I run a little game. Well, it's my business, understand? Sure, I understand. I've been trying to get that through her head for years. And that's one thing you won't ever get through my head. But supposing we all have a chair ride together again tomorrow. Well, why not? Now that I've been in one of them things, I kind of like it. <laughs> I'll be seeing you. 
So long, Dave. Goodbye. I was a little sore at you last night, Ward. Why were you sore? Because I figured you were on the make for Babe. After she'd fallen for you, you'd run out of her. And you don't want that to happen. It ain't gonna happen. Bill, are you in love with Babe? That's got nothing to do with it. I'd like to see her get hooked up with a regular guy. She likes you, Bill. Babe's too square to get mixed up with a gambler. You're the first guy I've seen that I step out of the picture for. That's on the level. You've got a lot of stuff. About that check, Ward. I could have cashed it last night, but I was too burned up. From now on, anything you want, just send a round for it. Thanks. Watch the coat. I just had it pressed. What are you so fidgety about? I don't know, Dan. That's the trouble with small fry like you. You're yellow. You want to make the take quick. That's the way these big deals are muffed. Yeah, but I'm afraid Babe will find out I didn't cash the check at the hotel. Oh, forget it. I'll put the B on the guy when I think the time is right. Well, why can't we do it now and get it over with? The best thing for you to do is to get over to the cafe and stick around tonight so she won't think anything's queer. Now get going. What are you waiting for, music? Get gone. You really think you'll get the job? Sure, babe. The fellow said I could start on the road in a day or two. I see that. Well, just think. In a few years, you may be a real businessman. Sure, it's a swell chance. I think. Looks like little Daisy's willing on me. Can you get into a taxi? Sure, I can handle her all right. Get her back to the hotel and see if she gets upstairs. It's room 730, Tommy. Hasn't anyone called me? You're not at all nervous, are you, babe? Oh, shut up. What's the matter? Hasn't the boyfriend been in tonight? I guess he's not coming in. So you know who I mean. Oh, I don't feel so good. Get you that way sometimes. Thank you, sir. Helen, come up and stay with me tonight, will you? I'm lonesome. Okay. What a mattress. Lady, am I going to bounce around on this box spring tonight? Say, what are you mooning about? I'll go to sleep, Helen. I'll turn it in a minute. But, babe, you just met this fellow. What fellow? You wouldn't kid me, would you? Oh, I don't know, Helen. I never felt like this before in my life. He ran into me on the boardwalk and... and knocked you for a loop. But what do you know about him? All I need to know. In a couple of days? Gee, you have got it bad. Talk about love at first sight. Now, with me, it's different. I got to investigate first. Before I fall in love, I got to know who's who and who's got what. Now, take that hardware salesman that came down here You from... take him. I don't want him. He's the last oh, bit of... Oh, shut up, Helen. Go to bed, will you, honey? But, babe, I wish you'd listen. Oh, go to bed, Helen.
Where are you going? Oh, I was just taking her to another place to live. What's the matter with this place? Better than she's had before. Yeah, but you don't understand, Bill. I think I do. Oh, now, wait a minute, Bill. Listen. Oh, Bill. What's the big idea? Little Daisy was about to take it on the lamb with your nephew. You mean you were going to beat it? Oh, sure, we were going to beat it. I was running away with Tommy. I love him, and he ah, loves shut me. Shut up, you little... Tommy, is this true? Of course it's true. And don't you tell her it isn't. It's got to be after what happened last night. Last night? Well, here's what's happening today. Come on, get out of here. Beat it. Say. Tommy! Bill! No, you don't. Oh, let, let me go. Come on, sit down, babe. I don't want to. Bill's right, babe. I'll bet you Tommy will be at the club again tonight, asking you for dough. If he isn't, so much the better. Now smile. It's a little tough to do right now. Yes, I know. When your confidence is destroyed in somebody you believe in. Ward, you took the words right out of my mouth. We may all feel differently about this thing after dinner. Swell. You know, that guy's got great ideas. He pegged Daisy right off the bat. Well, we. I was going to suggest my rooms at the Rochambeau. The Rochambeau? Gee, you're a little out of my class there. But take babes anyway. Change of scenery will do her good. Will you come, babe? Anything you say. Will you join us, Bill? Well, maybe. All right, then. I'll expect you at 7. I'll be there. Hello, hello. May I? You're looking very charming this evening. Thank you. Where's Bill? Oh, I guess you'll be along. Oh, pardon me. Surely. Make yourself at home, won't you? Hello? Oh, hello, Bill. Sorry, Ward. I won't be able to make it tonight. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah, you and Babe go on along without me. Say, Bill, I think she's feeling very much better. Right. So long, man. Bill can't come. I'll bet he was scared out. Of what? Oh, all this. Hurry up, will you, Dan? Daisy's waiting. What do I care about Daisy? Yeah, but I gotta get out of town. Take it easy. You've got plenty of time to spend your end of the cut on that dame. Well, what difference does it make how I spend it? None at all. Let's go. Are we going now? Sure. Come on. Come on. What are you doing? Just putting a little stuff in that spine of yours besides water. <laughs> Come on, you hand me a great lab. Come on. Me and my friend here want to talk to Mr. Hollister. I'm sorry, sir. Mr. Hollister is at dinner. Tell him what we got to see him about is more important than dinner. Yes, but... Uh... Uh, but get going. Just get going. You glad you came? Very. I beg pardon, sir. Yes? There are two men to see you. Uh, not now, tomorrow. They say it's very important, sir. Will you excuse me? Surely. Well, boys, what can I do for you? I got something that's worth ten grand to you. Well, that's very interesting. What is it? This. Why should my own check for $500 be worth $10,000 to me? Well, it's signed by you, ain't it? Yes. And it's made out to Babe LaBelle, ain't it? Yes. How would you like to have me show this to your wife? Well, that's a great idea. You boys have got your wires crossed. You should have played this joke on my brother. He's the married one. 
Well, it's worth ten grand to a guy like you anyway. Just why? You can't afford to have me... Now, to... wait a minute. I can afford most anything. I'm not afraid of that check what you can do with it. Aren't you Miss Lavelle's nephew? Sure, she's his aunt. How do you think we got the check? Oh. Miss Lavelle knows about this check, then. Sure she knows. Babe knows a sucker better than anybody in this town. Right, Tommy? Oh, sure. Babe gave me the check, didn't she? She's a very clever girl, isn't she? You said it. How much do you boys want? Ten grand. Of course, I don't carry around ten thousand dollars in loose change. But if you gentlemen will wait, I think I can raise five thousand. No monkey business. Hello, operator. Give me a place in town here called Bill Bradley's. Yes. Hello? Hello, Bill. I need $5,000 right away. Can you accommodate me until the bank's open in the morning? I'll send it right over. Thanks, Bill. It'll only be a few moments, and I'm sorry I can't invite you in. Does the ocean and the moonlight still thrill you? Everything does tonight. Am I included? I've got something for Mr. Hollister. Personal. Officer. Yes. The messenger is here. Hi, Mr. Hollister. Hello. Thanks. Well? Now you two had better go as far and as fast as that money will take you. What's eating you, Bill? That five grand? Babe's pal must be in a jam, or he wouldn't have sent for it. Why don't you take it yourself? Oh, I don't want to go over there, Charlie. But I think I will. Please. Why not? You're used to drinking, aren't you? No, I'm not. Most of the drinks at the cafe are fakes. What do you think of fakes? Well, a fake drink won't ever do you any harm. I mean a fake person. I haven't any use for them. Then why are you a fake? Lord, what do you mean? Five thousand dollars is a good price for a fake, isn't it? That's what I paid for you. And what I pay for is good... Hello, what? Hello! Just a friendly little dinner party. Well, why not? I paid enough. What do you mean? Did you ever see that before? Sure, what about it? Well, that's the check I gave Tommy to cash for you. Oh, don't be childish. It's the check you gave him to blackmail me. Blackmail? I just paid your nephew $5,000 for that check. Tommy. Yes, and another man. And you think I had something to do with it? That's what they said. And after all, you are out to take suckers, aren't you? You believe I'd blackmail you? Getting money from men is your business, isn't it? Oh, Ward, not from you. How am I so very different? I guess you're not. Bill, do you believe it too? Ah, oh, be yourself, Abe. You say Tommy was here with another guy? Yes. 
I and 3,000. You know, I ought to toss you right out of that window. Oh, that wouldn't be any good, Bill. Hey, Charlie. Get a couple of boys and round up Dan Higgins. And that little shrimp Tommy. Yeah, let me hear from you. Right. Now, let's wait. Sit down. Hey, what are you trying to do? Leave me flat? Don't bother me, baby boy. I'm just taking it on a quiet little lamp, see? Well, where's my part of the money? Didn't I always tell you you gave me a great laugh? Yeah, well, you can't get away with it. Oh, no? Get out of my way. No, you give me my part of the money. You heard what I said. Get out of my way. I'm the dealer. Yeah? Yeah, Charlie. Where? Okay. Well, let's get going. Where? Emergency hospital. Tommy. It's just a little accident, babe. He isn't hurt bad. You're in on this. What about that check, kid? Don't talk now, Tommy. I gotta talk. Dan made me do it. They thought I cashed the check, but Dan gave me the dough. I'm sorry, babe. Honest. Remember how you used to think I was lying? And I said honest. Well, I'm not now. Come on, babe. Can I come back? I'll call you. Will you wait? Isn't there some way that I can beg forgiveness? There isn't anything to forgive. Isn't there something... I've got a good answer for that one. May I see you again? Anytime. Good night. Good night. Brace up, babe. It's all right to go in now. Thank you. I want to be alone, Bill. Sure. You understand. But I'll stay and wait for you. No, please don't. All right. You call me at the face when you're ready to leave. Okay. What are you doing here? I want to talk to you. We've got nothing to talk about. Oh, yes, we have. Babe. The best thing you can do is leave us alone. That's exactly what I intend to do. As soon as I've repaired some of the damage. What are you driving at? You know, you don't belong in a business like this. What's that got to do with you? Nothing. But it has a lot to do with Babe, hasn't it? I still don't get you. You think Babe wants to marry a gambler? I don't have to think about that. I know, she doesn't. Is a business proposition of any interest to you? You know, you're a salesman and don't know it. And from what I understand, you've been selling yourself for years as a square shooter. What do you think you could do with Hollister's soups in the Detroit territory? What are you doing, handing yourself a laugh? The job is yours if you want it. Do you think, baby? I don't have to think about that. I know.
Hold on to me, will you? What's the idea? I'm shaking the sand out of my shoes. For keeps.